Are you serious? Are you serious, Michelle Obama? What? Are you serious? Really? Okay. I'm going to I'm going to read to you from the Weekly Standard. But before I do, can I read a scripture? Here's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 16. Because Michelle Obama actually tried to quote from this scripture. Here's what the Bible says in Matthew 4, verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what the scripture, Matthew 4, 16, is pertaining to. Again, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, Michelle Obama used the same scripture at a campaign rally. But hang on a second. Have you got coffee? Because you got to have some coffee. Man, that is, for, that is good. That's the freshly ground, the freshly ground stuff. Of, wow. Hmm. Okay. So Michelle Obama. What? Michelle well, let me read the article. It's short. This is the Weekly Standard. Michelle Obama made a remarkable claim when talking up her husband, President Barack Obama, at a campaign event earlier today in Nashville, Tennessee. That's right in the heart of the Bible Belt. And here's what she said, quote, I am so in. Michelle Obama said toward the end of her remarks, I'm going to be working so hard. We have an amazing story to tell. This president has brought, brought us out of dark into the light. The crowd of nearly 450 folks applauded as the first lady likened her husband to the Jesus-like figure. A messianic imagination, I would like to say. And in the book of Matthew, we read, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light and to them which are in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. That's Matthew 4, 16. The phrase is used to describe the words that Jesus preached. In Micah, light, however, is a reference to God's words. Rejoice not over me. O oh, my enemy, when I fall, I shall rise. And when I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. It says in Micah. Chapter 7, verse 8. Either way, in religious terms, light is used to detonate, to dominate, to destroy, if you will, darkness. Folks, was she trying to say, no, no, she wasn't trying to say. But the ref, or was she? The reference is that oh, President Obama is larger than life, that President Obama may be actually a chosen one or called into this purpose or in or maybe in some way messianic uh, enlightened uh, able to part as Hillary Hillary this isn't me this is Hillary Clinton Hillary Clinton said hey you would think he could part the Red Sea you'd think that the sea levels would would settle in it mountains would be brought down low and valleys exalted uh, you know look I remember in 2008 when he was running for president, the crowds were over a lot bigger than 450. I mean, they were massive. People were fainting. I mean, it was like there was an inertia, like an anointing, like an aura. The problem is that hope and change was what was the carrying banner to get him into the White House. Now the next question is, is Michelle Obama, was she just playing up to the Bible Belt crowd? And I'm not, you know, look, here's the thing. She can work for President Obama all she wants. And people can vote for President Obama. Matter of fact, I pray for him every day. I don't agree with a lot of decisions that he makes. I don't agree with a lot of his stance on certain issues. But there's times that he actually does things correctly that I agree with. I pray for him daily. And sometimes he does do things that I believe are in the best interests of America. 
Other times I disagree, no matter how hard he may be trying. I just don't see how that's going to help. But I can say this, never in a million years would I ever consider him Messianic. I wouldn't consider Rip Mint Rodney Messianic. Ron Paul, Rick Santorum, Herman Cain. What? Newt Gingrich? No. I wouldn't consider any of them. I wouldn't consider George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, Ronald Reagan. I wouldn't even consider Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, James Madison. None of them. Nobody on the planet is anywhere close to bringing the people out of darkness into the light. Can I tell you what the scripture means? Jesus is referring here. It's being, it's being uh, implied that the people were sitting in darkness, but they saw a great light. That light was Jesus Christ. And to them which sat in the region and the shadow, I mean in despair and death, light sprung up. You know, even when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says in Peter that as his body, as he died, he went and he preached to the spirits in prison. He took captivity, captive folks. He actually went into the bowels of hell and took the keys of hell and death from the devil. He was the light in the midst of the darkness. He was the life in the, in the shadow of death. He was the hope in the middle of despair. He was the victory when the world was falling in defeat. He is the hope of glory. He is the Lamb of God. And no way ever, shape, or form would I use a biblical scripture pertaining to the rise of Jesus Christ to be comparable to any human. No, not Buddha. No, not Muhammad. No, not, not any messianic or uh, no nobody there's the bible says there's no name in heaven or given among among men whereby we must be saved now let's be fair to michelle obama i'm not criticizing i'm not rebuking her or criticizing her i'm sure the speech writers wrote it to her and said hey look you're in nashville tennessee we've got to come out with a scripture okay and you're bragging on your husband. Let's see what we got here. And they and they pulled out this Mark, this Matthew 4, 16 scripture and said, hey, tell them that, you know, Barak is leading the people out of darkness into the light, you know. Um, you know, and she's probably think, wow, that sounds good, you know. I mean, these people that are running for the presidency, these politicians, a lot of times, they're told exactly what to say. That's why Michelle Bachman, you know, didn't know, they told her to talk about, Elvis Presley, and a great day for Elvis Presley, it was the day he died. I mean, sometimes you've got an enemy in the camp telling you what to say. But let me just say this. Don't, don't ever compare anybody to Jesus Christ. Don't put anyone up on that kind of a pedestal because there's nobody here. The chosen one, the second coming. I've seen those said. I've seen that said about uh, Michael Jordan when he returned to the NBA, the second coming. They said things like King James, of LeBron James, referring to him to the king who wrote and authorized, actually not wrote, but authorized the, com the combination or the collection of the Bible. No. You, you know, sometimes they, they like to take people and compare them to something larger than life. But truthfully, folks, no criticisms, no criticisms here of Michelle Obama. Not in, not in that kind of a negative light. Just the fact is, it's amazing to me that people, they, what they are doing is, they're, not, they're trying to elevate people to that level. That's not going to work. We all know that. But what really hurts is they're bringing Jesus down. They're trying to bring him down to our level. And that's not going to fly. Okay? I just wonder if she would have quoted the Quran and referred to Obama to the Prophet Muhammad. Would there have been a reaction? I'm just asking. I'm just asking the question. If she had referred, quoted verses from the Quran, from the Quran, and compared Obama to the Prophet Muhammad, would there have been a stir among the Islamic people? Wow. Just something to think about. Something to think about. Are you saved? You better give your life to Jesus Christ, folks. Send me a personal message. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved.